Talking about the capacity of my ice cream counter, another idea that is in the back of my mind is to construct a more permanent ice cream bar with a room overlooking the rolling hills, tables, seating, and more parking. A nearby summer attraction has announced that they will be expanding in the next couple of years. Such an expansion will certainly increase the number of visitors to the area. I am wondering whether I should capitalize on this opportunity and build my permanent ice cream bar before somebody else does that. I have heard rumors that the Johnsons down the road have been talking about getting into ice cream too. Based on my previous analysis, I figured that even with my current demand, I am turning away at least 290 customers every week, 120 every Sunday, and 170 every Saturday. In a 16-week season, I am turning away 4,640 customers. A simple expansion of my ice cream counter can capture those customers. But I am expecting the number of customers to increase tremendously over the next few years. By adding a permanent ice cream bar, I can capture that increasing demand. However, compared to the 20000 for the counter expansion, a permanent ice cream bar will cost about $50,000. I conduct some market analysis and come up with a forecast of the number of customers expected over the next five years. After comparing this number against the number of customers I can currently serve, I estimate the number of incremental customers that I can add. Here is the forecast of the incremental demand. I notice from these numbers that the demand isn't really expected to pick up until year three. So I'm wondering whether to first go with a small $20,000 expansion to my ice cream counter by the end of year zero, and then follow it up with a permanent ice cream bar by the end of year two. I call this my wait and see option. One downside of this option is that the $20,000 counter will be wasted after the permanent one comes up. On the other hand, maybe I should build the permanent facility right away. I call this my expansionist option. With this option, I can certainly preempt any potential move by the Johnsons. Also, I won't need to spend $20,000 unnecessarily on a temporary counter expansion. But a permanent facility entails higher operating costs totaling $3,000 a year from year one itself, compared to practically nothing for the temporary counter. Let me conduct a cash flow analysis of my two options. I put down the forecast incremental demand over my five-year time horizon. With the wait and see option, I start out with a cash outflow of $20,000 in year zero. After that, I follow up with $50,000 for a permanent construction at the end of year two. For the remaining years after the permanent construction, my operating costs are $3,000 each year. Of the incremental demand I have forecast, in year one, I will be able to serve all the 4,640 customers. In year two, even though the demand is higher, I will be limited to the ice cream counter capacity of 4,640 customers. From year three onwards, I can meet all the incremental demand. Next, I calculate the incremental profit contribution for each year given that each ice cream sold makes a contribution of $1.50. These numbers are my cash inflow values. Subtracting my incremental costs, or cash outflows, I can calculate the net incremental cash flow for each year. In the last column, I calculate the cumulative cash flow. Based on my calculations, I can see that over the five-year planning horizon, the net cash flow expected from the wait and see option is $14,420. Given the positive number, I can conclude that the wait and see option is better than the option I have ignored, namely the do-nothing option. 
Anytime I have cash flows happening over a time period, I need to factor in the time value of money. Assuming a discount rate of 8%, my net present value, NPV, works out to $1,040.77. This is a much smaller number than the net cash flow, but the wait and see option is still better than the do nothing option. Next, let me look at the expansionist option. Once again, I put down the forecast incremental demand over my five year time horizon. I start out with a cash outflow of $50,000 in year zero for the permanent ice cream bar. For the remaining years after this construction, my operating costs are $3,000 each year. With the permanent construction, I can meet all the incremental demand in every year. Calculating the incremental profit contribution based on $1.50 per ice cream, I get my cash inflow values. Subtracting my incremental costs, I can calculate the net incremental cash flow for each year. Next, I calculate the cumulative cash flow. Based on my calculations, I can see that over the five-year planning horizon, the net cash flow expected from the expansionist option is 29,380. This number is much higher than the 14,420 for the wait and see option. Further, using a discount rate of 8%, my net present value, NPV, works out to $9,380.97. Therefore, I can conclude that the expansionist option is better than both the wait and see and the do nothing options. In addition to the number crunching, which is pointing me towards the expansionist option, are there any other factors that I must consider in my decision? The expansionist option has the advantage of aggressively preempting the Johnson's attempt to set up a competing shop and take a slice of the demand. If while I wait and see the Johnsons open their shop, the increased demand I have forecast may never materialize, putting an end to my expansion plans. In addition, expanding right away will ease the congestion in my parking lot and perhaps even increase the business in my garden center. On the other hand, the wait and see option also has its advantages. For one thing, I don't have to come up with a large chunk of financing right away. I can put down a little today and then take another two years to plan for the rest. Meanwhile, I can watch the market developments before making the final commitment. Also, I will not be looking as deeply into the crystal ball to forecast my demand numbers as with the expansionist option. The deeper I look into the crystal ball, the fuzzier it gets, and the riskier my venture will be. Unless the rest of my investments and portfolio are on a firm footing, I would like to play it safe with the wait and see option. Given the lower risk, of course, I must be willing to take a lower return.